Hey, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to get started on creating the database. And this is where we're going to store our users accounts and the posts that they make. So first and foremost, go ahead and install PostgreSQL. I know for me, it was as simple as doing sudo apt install PostgreSQL. But for you, it may be different depending on your operating system. Go to their website and there's instructions on how to install it. Once you have it installed, run the command PSQL. If there's no errors, then congrats. But if there's an error, like something that says uh, failure authenticating or something, that would be because when you installed PostgreSQL, it came with a default user called Postgres. And if you're using a show and your user's name is not Postgres, then you're not logged in. So you could start PSQL under the user Postgres. And that would work. But we want to make our own user so we can keep it more simple for this series. So go ahead and if that's your case, do create user dash dash interactive give the user the same name as your shell name and when it asks when it asks you for the permissions and privileges of that user give it the role of super user and every privilege that's available just give it to that user because it's going to be yours once you're done you're going to need to create a database under the name of your user and then you can type psql press enter and you're going to be logged into Postgres. So to get started, let's create a file called database.sql. This is going to help us keep track of our SQL commands. And it's also going to be available on the GitHub repo of this video. So first of all, we're going to want to create a database called social media. So let's do this command in PSQL. And then once our database is created, we can connect to it using backslash C, the name of the database. And now we're connected to the social media database. Let's create our database schema. First of all, let's start creating the table where we're going to store our user accounts. So that would be doing create table users. And every user is going to have a unique ID, which is going to be a um, it's going to have the serial keyword because that means um, every user automatically entered is going to have an int, an integer as an ID. And every time a user is inserted, that the next user's ID is going to be increased by one. So the first user will have an ID of one, the second an ID of two, and so forth. We want this to be the primary key of our table. So this is going to be the primary column that will identify our users we're going to want every user to have a full name we can name this username and we want their username to be a var char which basically means like a string with a max length of 255 i don't think anyone has a first name and last name longer than that so we just want to save some space in our database and avoid any people that are trying to spam our database or anything like that. We want this to be a required field, so it cannot be null. Is required. You need to have a username to have an account in our website. We also want a column that stores their image. In this series, we're not going to store images per se, but we're going to store a link to their profile picture on Google. This will also be a string. Give it a max length. It is a required field. And finally, we're going to store their Google ID. This is going to be essential to our whole structure because when a user clicks login with Google, we get access to their name, their image, and a Google ID. So when they log in, we're going to get their Google ID and check our database to see if an account already exists with that specific ID. And if, and if it does exist, we just log them in. And if it doesn't, we can create 
a user and then log them in. So this is going to be an int and it is not null and it is also unique for every user. We don't want two users to have the same Google ID. So let's create this table now. Everything went smoothly. Nice. So let's create another table for our posts. In here, every post is also going to have a primary key. Every post is going to have a body with a max like 255. We don't want people spam spamming posts with very long posts. This is a required field. You can't make an empty post. And we also want an author ID. So this is going to refer to the ID of the user that created this post. It's going to be an int and it's going to be a reference to the users table in the ID column. This is a required field for every post. So let's create this table. Cool. So to see our tables, you can do slash DT and it will show you. And just to test it out, let's select every row from the post table. Zero rows, but see there's an ID column, a body column, and an author ID column. Let's select every row from the users table. Everything looks perfect. So next we're going to need to do npm install pg. Once you install that, let's make a new file and call it db.js. PG is basically a library that connects PostgreSQL with Node.js. So we're going to import PG and it gives us a, an object when we import it and we want to destructure it and take out the pool from it. And the pool is basically like a, a connection, a constant connection that we can use. And so we want to initialize the pool, the connection. So we want to do const pool equals a new pool. What we imported was a class. And this pool takes in an object which serves as kind of like the options to initialize this pool. We also are going to export this because we are going to use this in the rest of our app. So it's module.exports equals pool. And this takes in a database and we named our database social media. So Let's store all this information in an environment variable. Normally you would keep this a secret. I'm not going to because this is just a tutorial. So let's do an environment variable called database name. And that would be social media. So let's load in our environment variables. So if you watched last video, we've been doing this a couple of times. So and we want to access that environment variable. It's called database underscore name. Now it's also going to ask for a port. By default, PostgreSQL runs on port 5432. It's going to ask for a host. Right now we're running on localhost. If you were to push the prod, this would be different. For now, it's just localhost. They're also going to want a user to log into Postgres with. This would be the user that we created. In my case, it's Lester.
it's also going to ask for a password. So go into PSQL and type backslash password and make a password. Mine is just Postgres. All right, and that's it. So we have PostgreSQL set up with our server. And next episode, we're going to start authenticating our users and logging them in and storing their profiles. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.